Okay, so hello everyone. We've already taken 24 minutes of the tutorial session, but um, as I have briefly mentioned, we'll still just be going through airflow. You've already encountered airflow in uh, week that was week five, the last time we did a data engineering project. And maybe before I start, I'd like to just open up a discussion. How many were able to set up airflow and maybe who were not able to set up? So maybe just hands up for those who are not able to to set up, then maybe we can go through issues, what happened, and uh, maybe we can start from there. So how many were not able to set up airflow on week five completely? Okay, we have Emptinan. Anybody else? We have Josias, Tijisti, that's three. We have Johannes. One, two, three, four, five, Wangoi. Sorry, what's okay, so how many were not able to set up airflow on week five? We'll be using it again this week. And we thought it's best to go through airflow again. So it's mainly just a recap of what we've already done. But uh, yeah, okay, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we'll just go with the eight. So out of the eight, how many are on, uh, let's say, Linux? So I'm assuming some of, the, some of you have already shifted. How many are on Linux? If you're on Linux, put your hand up. If you are on uh, any other, if you're on any other operating system, just comment out your operating system. If you're on Linux, just put your hand up. If you're on any other operating system, just comment out your operating system. Okay, so I see most of us are still are on Linux. So no one is on any other operating system if you've not been able to set up Airflow. Okay, so I think let's start from there. Maybe what's the issue, what's the general issue? We can just open up the discussion. Maybe with them, Tina, you're the first one to raise your hand. What issue did you experience back in week five with your Airflow? Uh, on week five, yes. Uh, in week five, I was on Windows. So it was mm -hmm. like a nightmare. Really. I tried every <laughs> possible way. I actually used the, uh, I borrowed my brother's computer mm -hmm. to, to use it. It also didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I okay, okay. did it actually that week, at the end of last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so of the ones who have raised your hand if your issue was also your own windows just uh, drop your hand i need to see what other issues are there if your issue was windows back then just uh you can lower your hand we'll go to the next issue just yes just see what was your issue back in week five i'm not sure that i was using linux but uh i was able to see the, the dashboard of it but I was not able to connect my database and I was not able to, to uh, I mean to set up an action. So that was the thing I said. So I've had connect to the database as one issue. And then what did you say as the other issue? You said something else about uh, another uh, issue? Yes. Uh, yes, it was uh, about creating the DAG and setting up an action. Oh, okay, creating creating a DAG. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I tried that, but it, it, it did not work when I wanted it. So I think I have a problem with that. Okay, okay. So for the others who still have their hands raised, if your issue has already been mentioned, if you had an issue connecting to your database or uh, creating a DAG, you can just lower your hand. As we go next to Adijat, Adijat, what was your issue? Adijat? Adijat, are you there? Maybe as we get Adijat to maybe unmute, Gideon, Gideon, you can go ahead. What was your issue? It doesn't get mentioned. Uh, yes, my issue setting up Airflow was I couldn't use the Docker Compose file because it was taking up too much resource and my computer was just freezing. So instead, I decided 
Uh, I'm, I'm on Windows, but I was using WSL, so I, I installed everything manually on WSL, both Airflow, Postgres, and all the other tools. My issue was I uh, I set the Airflow home to my to my repository directory, and then it found the docs. So it found all the docs I created, but I don't think the connection between Airflow and Postgres was successful. So like ingesting files and so on, th those docs weren't running successfully. So that's my issue, like uh, how, co how to configure Postgres and Airflow. Oh, okay, so connecting with the database, I uh, assume yes. that's connecting with the, with the database. Yes, yes. and As well. since okay. I'm not using <laughs> Docker Compose, I had to set mm -hmm. everything manually and yeah, that's my problem. Okay, so you did set up your Airflow just standard standalone, like locally, you didn't yes. use Docker Compose from the no, beginning? No, I, I didn't, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So I have taken a list of the things, and uh, personally, I'm I'm running on Windows. Airflow is working fine; it just works fine for me. But the steps are somehow seamless, especially since I'll be running my Airflow on Docker. So for the Linux users, I think you can just be able to follow up. For week five, Azaria did this purely on Linux, so I am on Windows, a different operating system, but uh, the steps would be somehow somehow the same. So we'll tackle most of the issues solved. I wish I had asked this question before. Uh, connecting to Postgres, we can actually push that a little bit. I didn't uh, focus on that specifically, but uh, we will, we're going to introduce something else for this week in Airflow, and that is sharing data between tasks. So let me just share my screen and start from the word go. So for example, for Gideon, how to just set up um, airflow with docker so from where i'll be starting and um, i'm hoping even for the ones who have shifted to linux that you already have docker installed i am not going to do a docker tutorial so i am starting and hoping that your docker is already installed my docker is installed and running that's why i am saying i am saying that all of you know that in windows getting docker to run is an issue and that's why i'm starting from a point where my docker is already running i hope that's okay so for most of you because you've already shifted to linux your docker should be easy to run so i'm just hoping that when you do maybe like a docker run hello world you actually get an output that your docker everything the demon the engine is actually working okay so you can just stop me it will be more of a discussion class because we've already done this before so if you see an error any issue as you follow along, you can just stop me, and I hope we'll be able to finish in the 28 minutes that we still have. So I hope you can see my screen. And so like I have told you guys, my Docker is up and running. Nothing, nothing, there's no container. I've not initialized any container, even the Airflow container. But uh, my Docker, my Docker is up and running. Of course, I'm on Windows, so this is actually being supported by WSL. An Ubuntu 20.04 uh, distribution, so that is just the background of how my my Docker is successfully running. So for the ones who have not installed Airflow Docker Compose, so I have already installed one in my projects, but I can take you through a short um, sample of how to do to install Airflow using Docker. So it's actually quite easy, direct and easy much more easier than doing it step by step with uh, with uh, what do we call it with, um, when you're doing it standalone. So let me just in, go to my VS Code, initialize uh, VS Code project. And Gideon, I get you. This morning I was actually running everything, Docker, Airflow, everything on my machine, and it really gets tasky. So I'll try to remove a few things to remove the task, and thank God for this, you actually have a uh, access to an AWS instance, so this will be better. But for now, let me just, let me just open Visual Studio instance. And I also want to open, let me just open the Apache Airflow Docker install. Let me just search it. I think everything I've got here is good. I think you can never use the other one for a 
Okay, so if you it's if it's completely your first time installing Docker, the steps that I will be going through are basically what is already in um, it's been provided by Apache Airflow, a step by step guide on how to install Docker. So I can just Airflow Docker. So let me just share this link. Very direct. It really make the things very easy for me and as you see the first thing they're seeing here is that before you begin of course to install airflow apache as i've said you need to have docker installed and of course if you if you are doing a docker desktop then of course docker compose also comes with it but it's just good to confirm that you also have docker compose because airflow will not run unless you have docker compose version 1.29 and above on your machine so just do docker docker so you can just do this is let me just go to open a terminal here do you can do it step by step and um yeah so just do docker uh, hyphen compose minus minus version and uh you could see a version that is higher than 1.29 so those are the only prerequisites you actually need to be able to run uh, docker airflow on your machine Okay, so we go straight to fetching the Docker Compose YAML. What all of our installation will be using, you know, the, the good thing about Docker is that it continuizes the project's work. So when you just have this YAML file, Docker Compose.yaml file, you can just call that information to your work, get that Docker.compose YAML file to your work, and then you can go on from there. So if you're just starting, it will be call. You'll just copy copy this code from the site. So that's call. Hello four, so let me just let me just paste that. Call hello four, and uh, just as it is, it has the Docker version, and we are getting the Docker Compose.yaml. So I already have this file here, Docker Compose.yaml, but um, if you just run that again, a parameter cannot be found that matches the name hello four. So for Linux users, you will not get this error. If this um, nobody mentioned being on uh, Windows, this is an error just for Windows users because there's another service that is actually aliased as CAL. So I don't know if there's anyone who's on Windows users. I want I don't want to go into solving an error if there's no one on Windows users. That specific error that I have found is just uh, for Windows users. So MTNA is asking if Docker is recommended for Linux users as well. Yes, MTNA, just install Docker because what we are doing is we are installing Airflow container, which has already been done on Docker. We're not installing Airflow locally as a standalone tool. We are installing it using Docker. So even for Linux users, yes, Docker is recommended. So I saw a hand go up. I'm hoping it's not our Windows users. And I'm insisting if you're on Windows, you will get this error it's because there's something else uh aliased to use the name carl and like for linux users so if there's no windows users i think we'll just continue because this is an error just for windows users okay so if this is anyone who's following when you do uh carl carl lfo in that link you will just get the docker compose.yaml file download it to your directory so whatever directory that you are using for your project so i have my directory here called airflow local and uh, so what this command does it just gets this file called docker compose.yaml so a few things will be changing in this in this file because we'll be running it locally of course we don't need uh, everything here so we're just changing a few things again to reduce that workload for our machine Josias is saying i said docker is already installed in the machine yes i have docker in my machine Josias. i'm saying for linux users you also need to have docker installed but just as they get that is that did it get that question right yes 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 no i was I was talking about the EC2 machine that we are using. AWS. So, sorry, come again. I was talking about the AWS machine. You said that you you have already installed it. Okay. So we don't we won't have to install it again. Or or I hope sorry. that we won't be. My question is, this this we are. Uh, this work will be done on the machine, on the, on the, on the cloud machine, right? 
Yes, yes. Also, you're saying that you've already been told that Docker and both Docker and Airflow have been installed to all of your instances. Yes. It's what oh, okay. I thought. I thought that you said that it's already installed. Okay, that makes it easier. If Airflow running on Docker has already been installed on the instances, then uh, this is just for the ones who want to do it locally. So if you don't want to do it, if it's, if it has already been installed on your instances, then you don't need to do this part. We'll just go straight up to starting the Docker Compose. You don't need to do this if you'll be using your instances directly. This is for the local, if you're setting up your Airflow Docker locally. Okay, so is anyone setting their Airflow Docker locally? Do I need to still continue or I can just go up to the Airflow directly? Maybe by a show of hands, is anyone doing it locally? Is anyone still feeling the need to do it locally? Okay, empty none, empty none, empty none because they need to do it locally. So empty none, where are you? Have you? Do you have your Docker installed and uh, have you run the command, the curl command? Empty yes, none? yes, I have. Okay, is there a response? I know it could actually take a while for first timers. Is there a response when you did the curl command? Yes, uh, it's, uh, it works. It, uh, I got the YAML file. Um, okay, okay, that's nice. Mohammed, that's uh, maybe just go ahead, Mohammed. Yes, I have the YAML okay. file. Oh, okay, that's nice. So we all have the YAML file. So if you are doing it locally, a few things uh, will need to change. So I'll just go straight. I'm assuming we are for MT9 and Mohammed. We have it locally. So where we have the Airflow core executor, because we are doing this locally, then you just need to change the salary executor from a salary executor to a local because we'll be doing this locally that's what it means and then to reduce the workload because now we'll be doing this locally we'll we'll do modification to this .yml file just to remove a few things that we will not need things needed by the salary executor so for example down here you see the salary result backend and the salary broker role so those two files you can just let me comment that out i don't think it's it's nice to just remove things. So let me just comment that out. So we have the results. It's anything salary result backend that is uh, removed. And then next, we also have to re to delete the Redis. This uh, is a container called Redis, very heavy on your machine, but it's only needed for the salary executor, not the local version. So you can just scroll down where we have the salary container down here and just comment out the whole thing. Salary image all back everything comment out just comment out or remove it if they are doing it for one project just remove everything redis anything definite any definition or function I think there's something else let me just start because I'm thinking there's a definition I missed somewhere up here let me just go find redis redis Comment it out. Yeah, there it is. Comment that. Then if there's another Redis, Redis, Redis. Okay, so we've commented out every Redis dependency and uh, definition. Something else you also need to remove, also needed for salary, not for local version, is uh, you know why I keep, I keep mentioning these things. When you do an Airflow Docker install, it installs a number of dependencies. The scheduler, the worker, the executor, the work, the flower, it installs a lot of things. And most of this will not be required for the local executor. If you're doing this manually, like if you're doing pip install Apache Airflow, you know you get to install the dependencies one by one. So maybe you could do pip install let people install like the scheduler and you go one by one but when you do an apache docker it installs everything once and that's why i'm just going to the yaml file before i actually run the docker um, before i initiate the version so i'm just going to remove the other two so the other dependency i said is the airflow worker just comment out the airflow worker container the worker container Oops. Oh. So there's a container where is it? The airflow worker container, I think this is it. 
How do you uh, comment multiple lines? Are you uh, on VS Code? Yes. So like you can uh, select uh, multiple lines and control uh, slash backslash. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, so I hope I'm audible from this side. My net my page just disappeared. So I'm on my phone with my mobile data. I hope you can hear me. The last I think you were editing is the the airflow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so remove the airflow worker and then remove the flowers. You can see your screen. For sharing it. So many talk disappeared my Wi-Fi. That's why my laptop dropped. I'm on my phone with um, with mobile data. So let me just try to share again. I don't know if it will come, but yeah. So for the ones who are following, after commenting out the airflow worker, the next thing is to comment out the flower, which is towards the end before the volumes uh, container. So the flower container, also comment out the flower container, and then you can just save your .shaml file. Now it will be ready now to just keep the uh, run, run Docker app. I don't know, it's not, it's not sharing the screen. Let me just drop and come back. I don't know why you don't have access to share the screen. Let me just drop. What? <laughs> 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 Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Is it possible? It's not. Oh. You guys can see my screen now. I think I see it's sharing. So where we are, where we are now, we've already... We've already Can you recap the, the things, uh, I mean, the things that she commented out? Okay, so the first thing that we make sure we are changing is that we are changing... Let me just find it. Yeah, so first thing. Okay, so on the on the Airflow Core Executor, the first thing, the reason as we are commenting out is because we are changing this variable from a salary executor to a local executor. So make sure it actually changes to a local executor. When it's I think, to a local I think executor, your screen uh, is lagged. 
because yeah, you see yeah, I want a screen. Nothing move. Yeah, it just moved now. <laughs> now we're seeing the local executor. Oh, maybe it's yes. Let yes. me. I don't know if. Let me try to hotspot from. I think yeah. Yeah. Let me just try to hotspot. Yeah. 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 Lunch hour. Yes. Any other day apart from lunch hour? Okay. I don't know if I'm back. Is, is everything uh, visible from my end now? Yes. After changing to a local executor, you need to comment out anything Redis. Redis is just with another executor. So you can just go ahead at the top and search Redis. So the first things, like I mentioned, in the variables for the environment, we have the first two, which are just direct airflow celery results backend and airflow celery broker URL. So you can just comment that to first and then search anything else Redis. And we have a Redis uh, dependency down here. So you can just comment out that Redis, Redis uh, dependency. We also have a Redis definition, an entire um, container on Redis. So you can also just it's comment out the entire Redis. And then, yeah. And then when you do that, I think that's all Redis. There's no other Redis down here. Yeah, there's no other Redis down there. Then after you comment out the Redis, the next thing you go ahead and comment on the airflow worker. Yeah, so you comment out the airflow worker as well. It's also needed just for the accelerator, celery worker. And then finally, you comment out the plow. Plow is the last thing you need to comment out. Yeah, so the plow is also a celery flower. That's why we not so you comment all those out, you just save the YAML file, and then we are good to go. So before we start, before we run, we need to have a few directories. So the directories you see on my left side, the DAGs, the logs, and the plugins, you need to have these three because um, when you do your DAGs, you do them in a DAG folder. When you do anything you run, of course, it's Airflow Docker, the logs will be stored in your logs folder. And so you need this, this directory. So you just make the directories. If you on Linux on VS Code, the command is just make, make it. And then you do you do the folders. So it will be just stroke tags. And then you do a uh, stroke logs. And then you do a uh, stroke plugins. Sorry, I must speak. And then it has already made a speed. Maybe I forgot. I think I forgot. So you just do the minus tags, minus blogs, minus plugin. Again, if you're on Windows, this can give you an error. You cannot just do this in uh, in one line. It does not in Windows. You cannot do this in one line. You have to do this one by one. That's what I'm saying. There's no one on Windows. I hope if you're doing this on Windows, you will get an error. You have to do this one oh. by one. In Windows, you have to use commas between the names. Oh. I didn't even know that. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you for that. So I already have, I already have this folder existing. Of course, that's the area I'm getting here. That already exists. But yeah, for the ones following, just need the three, the three directories. Okay, so for Linux users, this is just for Linux users. Anyone not on Linux, you don't need to do this. But for Linux users, you need to set up like um, a user ID. And the way you do a user ID is that you set this in a .n. It's a .n, um, .n file. So these are the ones that we want to set, the Airflow UID and the Airflow GID. So if you're doing this on Linux, the command is uh, the echo, the echo command. 
again i'm on windows so i'll just show you nice mm-hmm. so yeah and the net is showing this is actually what i'm just trying to follow and then it has given the command but the uh, mm-hmm. yeah we're just mm-hmm. following this tutorial and we've just made the dag slots and plugins environment and the next thing we're doing is that we are setting up the users the user id so this is only for linux users the way i say it so you do an echo you set up the user id and you put that in the dot env file in the users mac users no need to do this so you can just uh, skip over that or do it manually if you need something you really want to do you can do it manually but yeah we don't need to do it okay up to there i hope that together because next we go to initializing our docker our airflow database so they, so from here i'll also start because i had stopped my docker airflow so from here i'll also start so i hope we are together up there because the next command will just be docker compose of course referring to that uh, file and then we do an app and then we initialize our database so whatever we are initializing is the airflow in it this is the one that will initialize our database so that I can close up airflow in it. And um, I don't know if for first timers this take a while. I, I had already created this, this image before. So I'm hoping it will take less time. But for the ones who are doing it for the first time, I hope it won't take as much time. But uh, yeah, it does take time. So let's, I don't know how long it will take. So let's just wait. Oh, I'm wishing I didn't uh, break, I didn't put down the service. But, um, yeah, so it's scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So I hope it's positive for the ones who are following and and Mohammed. I'm hoping it's positive. What's, what's happening on my screen is positive. So I'm hoping it's positive from your end. This is actually yes, from my end, uh, the .env file contains Airflow UID just only. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I'm running the Docker Compose uh, Airflow app, uh, it's it's downloading a couple of files, so it's going good. Yeah, that's that's good. Internet, what's your status? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't uh, reached this step yet. I'm still uh, commenting my YAML file. Actually. Okay, catch up. You see, this is taking a while, and I've done this. I don't know if it's actually re-downloading for maybe like Mohammed or the first time. So Generos is asking if you need to install PostgreSQL. I don't think if you are just getting the Docker image, I. Don't think I have it installed. I don't know if it's just recognizing it, but uh, on the steps I followed, there's nowhere you, they mention it's not it's not mentioned as a prerequisite. site, so I doubt if it's a must for you to install it. But yeah, I have it installed, so I'm hoping it's not just referring to something already installed. But uh, no, you don't need to. So I mined ran successfully, and it's successful because you can see here the version 2.41 and uh, Airflow exited with code zero. So the code zero makes it to a successful app. Uh, yes, Andenit? No, I, uh, I, it's just to clear up, like, uh, the Postgres SQL image, uh, I mean, container image has been defined in the service section of the Docker Compose YAML. So it's going to download it and uh, it's really, I think uh, Airflow also requires uh, Postgres to like store some information, some data, it's, it's just a dependency for it. So it depends on it, so it's will installed on the container. But if you already have the image installed on your Docker, it will uh, just spin up that image by just uh, like configuring the volumes and environments according to the Okay, thank you for that. And then it, I hope that makes it clear, a little bit clearer. Okay, so Mohammed, Mohammed, are we, are we where I am? 
now that i'm following up with mohammed and tinan are we where i am yes uh, do i need to to add the airflow to your id equals zero yeah yeah you it's, it's it's giving you an error to add i don't know if it's not a mask but if it's the oh the, the echo that internet share did not have a gid but you can just add a gid gid as well just give it zero i think it's initialized to zero if you don't if you don't uh explicitly say it so i think it will just be okay unless it's giving you an explicit error on the gid not initialized it should just be zero directly it's, it's default is just zero okay so um let me just let me just continue if you have the command actually if you want it uh, you can include the gid on the file thank you okay so after you have your database initialized the next thing you just need to do is to run your airflow and then just access it from your local machine so the command for that is just docker compose app but so it's docker compose app you can leave it at that if you want to follow up on the logs or not it's debugging on the the backend but i don't want to see everything i've just seen i I think you just run under the add minus D and I run that. So you can see the containers. We have the Postgres container, we have the database, we have the scheduler container, we have the triggerer container, and we have the web server container. All these three being initialized by by Docker Compose, which is what we will be using for the Docker Compose app. So as this is running, I think uh, the, the Postgres is already running very perfectly. You'll notice my my Docker. Of course, you can do this from the command line, but from the call, from the desktop, you can just notice that um, I have a couple of containers which have been initial, initialized by the Docker Compose. You can see the ones that are running. My Postgres is running. My database is running. The web server is being created on port 8080. The scheduler will also be created. And the trigger is, will also be created. So as soon as they are all up, I can now access Airflow from the user interface, and then you can now interact, just interact with the Airflow until you actually kill, somehow destroy or stop this container. So then let them just start. Taking some time, but believe me, it's less. Well, if you had Redis and Waka and Airflow on it, that would actually take a lot of time. So, I don't know. We should, I think we should go ahead and start making dabs. Let me just go ahead and start making dabs as this is running so that we can not. We'll come back to this. Let's just go ahead and start making dabs. Just as you had an issue of creating DAGs. And I don't know if I have to explain how DAGs work by now. Maybe just throw a question to you, Joseph. Do you know what DAGs are and how they work in um, in Airflow? Joseph is not here. Joseph just dropped. So who else had a, an issue with creating DAGs? Who else had an issue with creating DAGs? Do you know? Or maybe could we just have a volunteer to explain to the rest um, how DAGs actually work and why we use DAGs in Airflow? Any volunteers? Yes, not that not name. Yes, not name. Okay. I just want to share my understanding on DAGs. Uh, I think DAGs are, are used for scheduling some scripts. For example, we can somehow schedule loading data to the database, also, also uh, somehow transforming the data to the database. We can all put that into DAGs and schedule that. For example, if we had like uh, 
serious data, serious data, time series data. We can somehow manage that to, for example, we can do that to load the data at at midnight every day. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we are uh, by using DAX, and after that, we can use that to transform our data uh, by using different operators like the SQL operator, the Python operator, the Postgres operator, the SQL uh, yeah, yeah, you might, uh, yeah, That's DAX. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. So maybe just to to summarize, or you did say give a good summary. But if you notice how Apache is actually being marketed, it is being ma marketed as a platform that can other schedule monitor. But the main word, everything, what we are authoring, what we are scheduling, what we are monitoring is a form of workflow. Workflow means that it's just a task that is dependent on each other, somehow sequential. And just using the general term workflow, when we go down to airflow, these workflows are actually defined as that. A DAG, just in full word, is a, a uh, sorry about that. It, the D just disappeared, the meaning of D. It just disappeared from the head. It, um, director, so it's yeah. Directed. That's the point. Directed because of the arrows. The directed is a cyclic uh, graphs. And what this just means is actually the cyclic part. If you're saying task one followed by task two followed by task three, then after task three happens, task one cannot happen again unless there's some form of uh, retry that has actually been defined within your work. So, DAGs, I don't know if you can actually get an example of a DAG online. Yeah. Here yeah, we have ducks. <laughs> so we need it to be straight. So let me see. Yeah, this makes the most sense, or the first one. So this makes the most sense. So a duck is just like. Uh, it's a graph. It shows some form of flow, some form, yeah, it's a workflow. It shows some form of flow. So here we have a task, and this is what Shatnel was saying, the help is a huge task. So we have like our starting point, a starting task, followed by other tasks. And uh, this task of two can only happen after start has already finished. That's where we create some form of dependency. And op one is another task that can happen after start. So the arrows show how the graph is directed, meaning that, of course, end, we cannot do end unless we do some other task even here. That's what that's basically, basically what they are. I hope that makes, makes it clear. Something else, maybe we, we, we finish up with the definition of terms before we go ahead to creating a DAG. You'll notice I've said that in each DAG, each node where we have the start of two of one, some other task, each node in a DAG is defined as a task in Airflow. And each task, as a definition of a DAG, a node in a DAG, each task actually runs an operator. Natnail has mentioned something about a Python operator or a Bash operator. And uh, this is how the tasks are, are actually being executed. The difference between a bash operator and a Python operator is just that uh, the Python operator will run a Python code, maybe just like a Python function definition, and then the bash operator will run a bash command. So something like an echo, of course, just something like a Linux command, echo, hello world, just a normal bash. Okay, so with that in mind, let me just go ahead to before we create a DAG, you probably said we created a DAG before we, the, the, the containers finished. So they did finish from my end. I hope for Mohammed and then Tina, we also have the Airflow Docker app. So after they've all run, I've told you from my Docker Compose, you can see that all of them are running. But of course, if you're in Linux and you don't have a Docker desktop installed, you can just check that all your, all your containers are running. 
by just doing a uh, docker ps and when you do docker ps you see all the containers that we've just started yeah so you see a web server here it is running and it is healthy we have a trigger it is running healthy we have a scheduler it's not healthy but uh, i think it's safe i don't know it's not healthy but it's safe but it's and then we also have a postgres which is also running and healthy not that we have this running it means our airflow is uh if i just go to a site online whatever browser you have on your machine and you do a local host local host and um it's called colon local host colon 8080 then you'll be able to access the airflow on your app so airflow local host 8080 If you installed using Docker, the username and the password for logging into your UI is Airflow. Airflow username Airflow. 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 If somebody is for some reason did this locally, maybe you did set this during your um, your setup, and you just put the username and the password that you did your setup. But if you did it using Docker, the username is just Airflow and password. Of course, they have uh, been set up in the Docker docs, um, YAML file. The, the username and the password. Even Postgres, but if you check the web server, yeah, the username is uh, Airflow and the password. Yeah. So when Airflow loads, at the first instance which is the first time ever you'll get a couple of dags these are just example dags that uh, come with the uh, airflow container with the airflow docker container so all of this is just an example of a dag like for example if you open up this dag and um, If you look at the graph view, as I was explaining, where one task is followed by the other. Yes, and it is a question. How can we remove the example tags, uh, like we gave from when we do like a uh, init, airflow init? So how how can we like remove them? Okay, so there's uh, when you look at the Docker Compose HTML file, there's a variable, there's a variable called Airflow call, sorry, Airflow call load examples. This has been set to true. Oh, I see. So okay. if you just change it to false, then all the you won't get all the examples. You just be an empty, empty UI. Oh, I see. I see. Thank you. So this, this only has this is a bunch of parameter which only has. I don't think even this is flowing. Let's look for a bigger. A bigger dag, then we just go to the dags, look for something. I'm hoping as they go down, the intensity increases. So let me just see this one. I hope this one has um, an entire flow. My machine just run. Yeah, it's not it's not Excel, but you can just see that uh, here we have an example of a DAG with ten tasks. Where should run is like the first task, and then empty task is dependent. If you if, if you just hover through your your graph view through your task, you'll notice that if I had like a tree and entire tree all the way down here, the dependencies actually highlight and you'll see that this task, get task one, can only run if should run is run. So meaning that task one is dependent on should run. Same thing, empty task two is dependent on should run. But empty task one and empty task two, they can actually run on parallel because they are not, they are not dependent on each other. So I hope, I hope that's clear. I want us to now create our own. Life.
I would actually just I would it would be nice to go ahead and uh, remove the examples, but this will need me to actually bring down the data. I don't know if it's a good idea with the time, or I should just go ahead and take notes. Let me just let me just take it down for a second. So the minus we have added is just to clear the volume, the Postgres database that I initialized at the beginning. This means when I do a Docker Compose app, I will have to run the database again. That's why I have done the minus v, so the volume is also, also goes down. So let's just remove that. And I think from this point, we can just start to create our DAGs. So the good thing about Airflow is that they are just, it's based on Python. So all DAGs, they are all just Python files. So we could have like our first DAG, our first DAG.py. And then so for our first DAG.py, now we just uh, define define our DAG. So we just want to do anything just to show you how you can create your DAG and how, yeah, the definition of a DAG. So I see my, my document download this is but back up. And as that goes up, I keep, I don't know if I'm confusing you guys, they keep going up and down because I don't want to get wasted wasting for the Docker app being coming up and oh sorry. I just did an app and I didn't change I didn't change the examples to false. Yes, I'm chilling. Yes, I'm chilling. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, why did you do an app without uh, what is the difference? So um yeah. okay. Yeah, I wanted to change it. Okay. I don't know why we did that. I'm confusing myself. So we have to bring it. No, I can't. It's okay, now we, now we bring it down. We can just. So it's up now, it's going up. So let's do our initialization of that. I'll focus on the DAG. I promise you guys I will not go back to the, the, to the Docker again until we are finished with the DAG. Okay, so definition of our DAG. The first thing you do is that you actually need to import the DAG. So this is from Airflow. I'm hoping, of course, if you have Docker Airflow, it's also we have Airflow. So you just do from Airflow import a DAG. And then when you do, when you import the DAG, you need to instantiate this DAG to show that this is actually um, a graphical thing that you, it's a workflow, a graphical workflow that you are defining. So the way you do that is uh, with the DAG, of course, referring to that, to that DAG. And then we will we'll do our definition of our DAG there. And whatever we are doing here, we are doing it as a DAG. So our definition, our instantiation of the DAG will come in between the brackets, but our task, any task that fall within this DAG will come after the, com the, the columns. So for now, let me just write pass. For now, let's just do a pass, but we will do the tasks a little bit later. For the definitions of our DAG, there are a few things that you need to define when you are doing your DAGs. I don't know if Joseph just came back, it's actually being very helpful. For, yeah, Joseph is here. So when you're defining a DAG, user, there are a few things that just need to be defined so that you can instantiate your DAG. One of them is the DAG ID. The DAG ID. 
the dog ID. And this is just basically what name are you giving your dog. So this could be as simple as um, first dog. Let's call it first dog zero one. First dog zero one. Any institution, anything you do within the dog, you just separate them with a comma. And uh, another thing you need to instantiate is, for example, a description. You could do a description. It's not, it's not important, but you could not that it's important. It's okay. It's important, but it's not. It's not like it will make your dog not run. So you could do a description. So let's say, uh, the next thing you could do is um, a start date. When do we want our dog to start running? So let's do a start date. So how we'll be defining our start date is using the date time, the date time library from from Python. You can just import that as well. Since we'll be using the date time, so let me just import that from time. I'll also be using a time delta. So let me just import that as well. Uh, this time. So here we just do a uh, date time. And so let's say I want my dad to start running. So that you can see some logs, let me put it to a day that is behind. Let's put it yesterday so that we see a run for yesterday and today. So let's do 2022. Today is the month. We are in the month of October. Today is the four. So yesterday was eight, three. And uh, let's say you want it to run. You could actually define a specific time as well. So let's say you want to run it right now, it's one. So let's do 10, I think 10 a.m. Let's do 10 a.m. So you actually get two runs for yesterday and for today. Something else you want, you'd like maybe to initialize with your dad is um, an interval. So for example, we said it's starting yesterday and we want it to run daily. So the interval could be like uh, daily. So let's do an interval, it's a uh, schedule, schedule interval. And, um, Do something like a retry. I don't know if they can define a retry. I think to do a retry. That's when, that's why I'm doing the template. But I think we'll do this. Let's just do this later. When you change the examples to default, do we have to init the air login? Yes, that's what, that's what was running down here. The uh, Docker Compose, Docker Compose app airflow init. That's what I was doing again when I changed it to Airflow Mohammed. So that's, that's what was happening down here. Something else I forgot to mention is the default arguments. Default arguments could be things like you are the author, who is authoring this work for the data engineer, and uh, maybe what's their email. If an email has to be sent to you, if, if there are any errors. So you also need to define this as default argumentation for your entire DAC, for your entire DAC. So you could just set it up set this up as um, as a dictionary, as a dictionary. So just default, default out, default out is equal to a dictionary, so we a dictionary. And we're giving it the order, the owner. So let's do an instruction. We also do um, equals. If you just have any question, you can ask. I'm just doing some default um, some default settings up here. And default implementations.
Oh, so, sorry guys. I was wondering why the thing is underlined. If I'm using the wrong, I'm using the wrong operator. I'm using the wrong operator. Okay, and setting up a DAG could be as simple as that. It's just a DAG that has no task at all. If I actually just run this DAG, I can see this DAG from my front end, but it will have uh, no task running. So let me just, I don't know, let me just test that here. Let's just that theory. So let's just save. And then I go to my UI. So let me see, let me load my UI. Oh, I didn't I just initialize the database. I'm so I don't have a place. I need to the database so that I can pull it up. Are there any questions so far, maybe? Somebody who's following or somebody who had an issue last thing. Is there anyone who has an issue so far? Maybe I've confused you somewhere. I think I was also Yes, and Uh, I was just following and the duck didn't show up on the uh, dashboard. I don't know why. Let me let me let's let's just say I want I don't want you to do a task definition until we actually see the DAG as an empty without a task. Oh, how long? How long? We are waiting for the the database. Okay, so our UI should be up. Give it some Wango, Wango is saying on my airflow screen it's empty. This is after after removing the examples, right? Wango? Yes. It's okay. I think then we can just go ahead to to put the tasks. I don't know why my my UI is not working. Maybe I should just give it some more time. My UI has a big picture. Uh, no. Let me just give it time because I think I think I have the containers running. I do have all the containers running. Oh, okay. So here yes, some are still saying they are still starting with the web server. The web server is still and unhealthy. So I think I'll just give it some more time. Let me give them. A few more minutes as we go to the definition of a task.
Yep, let's just give it a few more minutes as we go to the definition of that. Okay. So task definition. Task definition. So instead of pass, this is the when I did the pass is because I didn't have any task. So you can just go ahead, remove the pass, and then we start our first definition. So we could just start maybe let's call our first task task one. And uh, as I had said, every task creating it has to be it has to be an operator, some form of an operator, either a customized operator or if you don't have a customized operator, it has to either be a Python operator or a bash operator. How we differentiate between the two is I had said bash operators they just run bash commands and the Python operators they run a uh, Python code, like a different answer or something. So let's start with an example of a bash, a bash operator. So let's just do bash operator. And then other definition of our task will come in between the bash operator. So again, just like the dub, a task takes a task ID. So just the naming of the task. So let's do a task ID. Let's just call it task. Let's give it a, a, a unique name. Let's give it a task, task bash task one. One. Let's call it that so that you can be able to track it instead of just removing the names. Something else we need the definition of our of our DAG, no, of our task. If it's a bash command, if it's a bash operator, then it will need the bash command. So we have And the bash command here to be, you said the bash command to be as easy as uh, echo, echo hello world. So let's do echo. So anything you know is a bash command, a bash, uh, let's say a bash. I think anything that you can use with Linux <laughs> can actually qualify as a bash command. So if you want to use any of those, you can use them within the bash command area. So we have that, we have our task defined, and so we just want our task one to run when this when this DAG is initialized. So, sorry, task one, it's one word. Task one. So let's save that. I don't know if my web server is healthy now. Let me just do that again. Healthy, everything is healthy, but it still should be running. Shouldn't we import bash operator first? Oh, um, <laughs> thanks, Andrew, for that. I didn't even notice that it's underlined here. So, of course, we have to import it from airflow. It has bash import bash. So let me just import the Python operator as well, so that I don't forget a little bit later. So, Yeah, and you can see my DAG, the one we've just created. We called it first DAG01 and the owner and if I just open that first DAG. You can just go straight to the graph view so that you notice it's only one task. It's only it only has one task. Again, it's a bash operator, very nicely put there, and it only has one task called task bash operator one. So if I want this DAG to run, I can just turn it on here, make that DAG run. And uh, I don't know if we should do an auto refresh in this.
Jesus. Yes. This version looks different. I don't know if you guys listen to it. Go ahead. I'm here for a preview and where to access my logs. And this version looks a little bit different. And then it's just go ahead. Uh, let me yes. give you the number. My, my dog is not showing up after like I created the dog. <laughs> You cannot, you cannot see it on your dog's list. Yes. yes. Doesn't show up. You just try. Mohammed, Mohammed, is it showing on your end? I have a theory. Uh, Mohammed, is it showing on your end? Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't uh, uh, comment the, the example. So it keeps showing every time I uh, doing Docker Compose up. The examples keep showing up. You no know, example is showing every time I uh, doing compose Docker compose up, even though I I uh, initialized the the value to false. Yes. Did you save? Did you save that file? So for both yes. Andenet and Mohammed, ensure you save that file. And you both of you guys mentioned that you skipped the airflow. I, you skipped. I did, the, but like I just uh, take it take down the uh, image uh, the compose file and. I do in it and like after even after doing that, it's not like showing up. It's just empty. Okay, maybe I don't know, could you share your screen? Maybe just share your screen. Okay, let me do that. Uh, so Can you see my screen? No checks. Yep, there it is. Yeah. Here is not showing up. Here is my deck. Uh, Wait, and, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see now. Yeah, it's not showing up here. I just, uh, here is my deck. I just copied what, like what you what you wrote, and uh, I did. I mean, the, the Docker is, uh, is also running. So we do Docker. Yeah. It's running well, and I also like to take down the Docker and initialize it. So it's initializing it. It's 
So when I do Docker Compose app, uh, yeah, so do Docker Compose app D. And the your Docker Compose is two words. That's that's not that's normal. What? The command Docker Compose. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Docker version I have installed is the, uh, I just installed it from the repository. Like I didn't uh, follow the traditional uh, way of like installing it. it uh, this way, like I could uh, have the very latest uh, Docker. But also like I, ca I cannot do uh, Docker hyphen compose. Like it's not recognized that. If I do, for example, Docker that was like uh, up, the Docker compose command did not find like it will it will say that yeah so like uh, this is the way I write it up so like it, it's it's also worked like the containers are running so like Docker uh, pseudo Docker yeah, yes so it is running it's healthy and uh, running so let me go to web page that if I reload airflow and so there is a warning. I haven't noticed it. Doesn't appear to be running. Do you install your Docker with um with uh with Docker or with your airflow with Docker? It, yes. Here's my comp my Docker compose file. I just uh uh, use the local executor. I commented out what you said we should do. Like Redis, here's also Redis is being commented out. I also commented out the Airflow worker and uh, okay, when, the when flower. You when you check the Docker PS, is the scheduler way? What is the scheduler? The scheduler for the okay, scheduler okay. Computer. is it running? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is saying yeah, it's restarting. It's running. It's not. I think the status is not well. So how do I I go about like uh, uh, running it correctly, the scheduler? So I know initializing scheduler is just airflow scheduler. This this works for the local version. I'm not sure about if it will work for the Docker version. I will just do airflow scheduler. We should start up the scheduler. Could you try airflow scheduler? Sh should I do airflow scheduler? What did you say? Just airflow scheduler. Here? Airflow. Okay. Airflow. Do I have to do like a uh, Spelling is S C. Uh oh, uh, I think this is spell. And should I run this command? Or sudo? Uh, I mean, sudo Docker up. Uh, I think you can't use that code unless you install it into your physical machine. You have mm -hmm. to explicit into the container or use Docker exit. You have to okay. open a bash in the container, inside the container. Unless otherwise, you can't access Airflow from your terminal. <laughs> So like, I, I, do I have to do like a docker exec it, I mean? Yeah, you have to. 
copy the ID, right? The, the, the controller ID? ID? Yeah. yeah. You can do, 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 do Docker exit. Yeah. Minus, minus TI. T TI, yeah. TI? Is it TI? Actually, guys, just a minute. ID. Let me, let me. Let me excuse myself. I'll be back in a, in a few minutes. You can just continue the discussion and try to keep the scheduler running. I think that's where it's all the error, okay? TI root. TI? Root. Root. Yeah, because uh, after that, you have to put your container ID. Okay, the, that, is, uh, uh, that is, which one is it? Uh, is it? Airflow Sigler, which one is it? Yeah, the, the, one. Second one, right? the second one, this one. Yeah, also. Yeah. Yeah. So like, press. Then, uh, beam bash. No, you have to. Okay, yeah, I have to say like, uh, bash. No, beam yeah, bash. Beam. Yeah, yeah, forward slash B. Forward slash B. Okay, oh, I have to like put forward slash. Yeah, I think that will work. Uh, it says no search container root. I, I what if we omit hyphen hyphen root? No, no, after ti, add u dash u. Okay, dash u. Yeah. Uh, make it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that will work. Okay, but there is an error. It says error response from daemon container. It's right. Okay, since the container is not running, uh, yeah, you can Yeah, I can. I cannot do that. But I was hoping, like, what if I uh, explicit, explicitly uh, run run it? I mean, what if we do like a Docker? Run like uh, the specific container. Yeah, I thought... Okay, we can't do that. Oh. What if uh, I think there is also like a, a clean way to. Uh, I mean, to stop or re remove like uh, the Docker Compose, like by just removing the orphans and like rerun it. The whole containers, you can do that. Yeah, and rerun it. Uh, there, there is Docker, I think it's top. Let me check. So, Docker Compose down, volumes. Down and, and then. Or you can do docker compose dash f. Oh, I, I think uh, I, I should not use the hyphen. My, my. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, and uh, so now so, we can initialize it, right? Uh, Yeah, it takes its code zero, it means it's good. Okay, so let's do Docker Compose up, right? How are you importing? Now, now, going? now it's healthy, I think. So uh, let me go to. The same error. Excuse me, do not appear to be running. But it says it's healthy, right? When we do like, uh, yeah, this time the status is 
Okay, it says like three of the containers are like starting. So just give it time. Okay, yeah. So the sending still restarting. The sending still restarting. I've seen a container that is still restarting. The first okay, one, yeah. that's the... The first one, yeah. Is it still the schedule that is restarting? No, it's not. I think it is. Yeah, this the the scheduler is. Yes. There's something wrong with. Uh, maybe who else has had this issue? The scheduler not. They say not immediately starting. So I'll just uh, Google it or if there is some. Yeah, but definitely that was causing the issue because um, it really is an important container for the for airflow for to learn on your mission. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to has import errors. I don't know. I'm going to maybe speak up or maybe just tell us what your error is. Um, so we actually changed uh, date time because I think the error was import. I had um, from date time, I just imported date and then time delta. So I've changed it to date time. I'm getting a different error now. Um, but I'm getting an unexpected keyword argument schedule interval which I'm not sure. I think it's on the, it's on the default ads, the schedule interval in the default ads. Um, sorry, what? Maybe just share your screen. Share your screen, maybe it could be easy. Instead of guessing where the error is. Um, Okay, so uh, this is what I changed and this is what I have. Um, when I run it again, I'm getting this schedule interval. Oops, I, I don't understand. That's, that's spelling for schedule, that is S. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow, okay. <laughs> okay, nice, it's working. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, I don't know if you can continue with someone else. Can... So, for underneath, we need to know what, why the schedule is not starting. Maybe do a little bit. Schedule is not starting immediately as they are. Or did, well, when you maybe check if you when you were doing the changes, if you touched anything on the scheduler container, the airflow scheduler container. If you you're following, then uh, just check if you did change anything. If you commented out something because it's just before the airflow worker, just check if you did comment something. Uh, okay, I'm going to check. Okay, this uh, is I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the example. Okay, just share your screen. It gets easier if you just share your screen and. Um... Let me share my screen. Do we have any other? Do we have like a career tutorial in a few or something to do before the CBS? What 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 time is it next night? The whatever has been scheduled.
in five minutes. Oh, that Yes, and the next, and I think we'll take a hold on Mohammed for a few of this and the next, yes. I noticed that uh, in my Docker Compose, like the executor I'm using is the local executor, but like the, uh, I mean, the first letter is lowercase. L, L is lowercase. Uh, does, does it really matter? I, uh, I'm not sure. I just changed at this point. I think we're just hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry. Let me try changing that. And I haven't commented out uh, uh, other thing like uh, I checked. Yeah. So what's the issue, Mohammed? Uh, and I keep I keep seeing uh, the examples, and I have uh, the same uh, thing that ended it say uh, um the lowercase in the local host. Okay, let me try changing that. Um, I, I didn't know, but is Python really case sensitive? Yes. Can Can you see my screen, right? The scheduler is not. You see, the scheduler does not appear. You also have a scheduler issue. The scheduler is not running. Yes, yeah, it keeps saying that. Uh... So maybe for, for the two of you, just change the L to a capital L. And then. Run everything, then you can check back from there so that they can just finish up in the four minutes. Try to combine. I hope that for most of us here, that the airflow is not running. If your airflow is running, making tasks and that is easier. But the airflow, as long as the airflow is running, I think it's one of the major. So I hope you can still see my screen so that we just uh, wrap up a few things. I just had a few things to, to add on. You can still see my screen, right? Okay. So something else I wanted to talk about is on creating uh, dependencies. So if you're creating dependencies, as you had seen from my site, where we just had one where we only had one task, we only had just had one task in our dump. And I want to show how we create that like that common it's somehow like a lineage where task two is dependent on task one and so forth and so forth. So from your um, from your file, from your present file, just go ahead and create the second task. So let's make it a bunch of as well. And uh, the definition stays the same. So I can even copy just copy here. Copy and uh, paste there, let's call it bash. So, and maybe for the same, let's echo hello, Anna. Okay, so the kind of dependency that I want to create is that to say that task two can only run after task one is done. That means that task two is kind of a downstream of task one. So the, 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 uh, you have uh, a number of ways to set this. So you could actually say, for example, task one, and then um, task one, we are setting the downstream, so set. So we are setting the downstream. downstream. In the downstream we are setting is task two, so task two is the downstream for task one. So we're just saying that we've created a dependency. If I save this and refresh my UI, you see that a new a new task has been created with an arrow showing that it's actually dependent on task one. So um, if you have more than one task, you have more than two tasks depending on task one. So let me just copy paste these things. So let me just go ahead and copy paste. So we have, let's call this task three and uh, bash operator task three. So let's call it an operator. 
Mm. And um, so both task two and three, they're both dependent on task one. So how we can set this is, uh, okay, let, let me just leave this as example one. So let me just comment that out. And then you can just say now that task one, which is like the parent, the upstream, they are both, both task two, so task two, both task two and task three are dependent on the spot. So this is another way, using the two forward slash is another way of creating the dependency. So if I just save this and load, you can see now what I've created is uh, we have two tasks. This one is dependent on this, this is dependent on this, but they are both parallel, they can run at the same time. Ah, so I don't know if, uh, maybe I'll share documents, because there's one thing I wanted to really focus, to add on for this. So I don't know, the career teacher, can you give me maybe just five minutes to just mention one important thing, the careers, I'm just hoping for five minutes, let me ask for five minutes. Is there a career teacher on call, please? Is there a career teacher on call in this system or, or uh, you have to stop there? Um, you can go ahead. Five minutes is okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. Yes, and minutes. You can just go ahead and ask the question as I mentioned. And then it's okay. Uh, now it worked for me, but now I'm having uh, another error, an import error, uh, like when I import DAG, but uh, I, didn't, I don't see like uh, uh, any error. Like, I don't understand the error. What, what, what is it? What, which specific, um, what exactly are you trying to import? Uh, I am trying to import DAG, but but it says uh, uh, error in importing DAG. DAG. Let me just copy and paste the uh, error, maybe. I um, okay. Invalid syntax. That's that's a syntax. The syntax issue. So it's not. I don't know, could you check the indentation? I, let me just continue with this tutorial. Maybe we'll, I'll, uh, I'll look at that from the Slack. Let me just continue because I wanted to mention something else, something important. So let me just, uh, let me just mention it. I don't think we'll have time to code. Um, so guys, let me just mention it. You have to go and look at it. So in some instances, especially for this week, you'll find that maybe you need to share data to share data between two tasks, two multiple tasks, such that the output from one task is the input of another task. So this, this could mainly come up for the Python operators where you're doing like a, um, like a, a, a Python function and the Python function has uh, parameters. And maybe it's taking an argument. The input of one function comes out from the output of another, of another task, another definitely another Python operation other Python function. So what happens in Airflow, there's these things on the admin, I hope you can still see my screen, there's this thing on the admin called XCOMS, and every output that you actually take from any of your tasks is uh, recorded in your XCOMS. Um, okay, so we don't have any outputs, I don't know, let me... Let me just quickly define, I have one minute, let me define functions, let me define a function, let me define a function called um, create, 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 create that, <coughs> which takes in an input, uh, no input, let's just not do, let's not do an input, so define a function, let's first let's do, let's do a first name function. So let me allow me to explain this after it's done because of time. So it's I, it's, um, 
So then we come here to the Okay. 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 I don't know, guys. Can I just share the syntax later? Because um, what you're just trying to follow is how to share data between tasks. I see my time is up, the time I had followed. What I'm trying to show is just how to share data between tasks, where the output of one task is used as an input for another task. How Airflow does this is by use of, uh, as I have shown you from the front end, is by use of SCOMs. I hope you'll just allow me to share the codes and maybe the resources later, but it's just as simple as using SCOM push and uh, SCOM pull or just um, instead of push, you just get the return of an entire function as the input or uh, to an SCOM poll argument. So I just need to mention that because you might find yourself wanting to share data, especially for this week between, between a number of tasks. I hope that summary is clear. I'll make a point to actually share, share the data. That's okay, guys. And I send it to solve your issue. That is good. Thank you, Angoy, for helping out. Okay, so I, I'll just share. I'll share. I hope that, that may be a little bit easier for the ones who have been able to follow through. I hope you've been able to solve one or two issues. And then it in Tinan Mohammed. I think went, you went quiet. I don't know what happened in Tinan. Maybe I'll find you on Slack. You did go quiet. I'm not sure where you are. You are still at well, my side, everything has been like resolved, so thank you. Yeah, ah, okay, okay, that's nice. Now okay, I'm moves. hoping for my to change the small L and now it's working. Uh, no, uh, I changed it, but I'm facing some problems, but I'll, I'll tackle them down. 